Hey and welcome back. I'm currently working through what's going to be the biggest project I've done so far on the channel and as much as I'd like to show you it now, it's unfortunately taking a little bit longer to finish than I would have expected. So instead of rushing to get it finished, I thought we'd do something a little bit different this week. So this video actually starts off last week where I made a tap follower and I also mentioned somewhere that a tap follower is actually a pretty good project for a beginner. It got me thinking about what projects would I recommend to someone who had just gotten a lathe and what projects should I have done when I first gotten my lathe. And by projects, I mean something a bit more useful than a step cylinder. I mean, we all made those when we first jumped on a lathe. And hopefully we can make something other than broken carbide inserts, which I've also made quite a lot of. So after having a bit of a think about it, I've come up with six projects which should hopefully help develop your skill on a lathe. And my hope is once you've done all these, you'll be left with a bunch of tools which will be very useful when you're using the lathe. And as I go through the list, the projects will increase in difficulty, but it shouldn't be anything too difficult for you. So I guess let's start off with what is undoubtedly the easiest project to do. And that's going to be to make a half center. And here it kind of feels like cheating because you don't even need a lathe to make this. I mean you will need a lathe to use it, there's no point in having a half dead center without a lathe, otherwise it's just a pretty rubbish paperweight. Now if you've never heard of one of these before, a half center or a half dead center is effectively a dead center which allows you to face off a piece of stock in the lathe. If you have a normal live center, you can't actually feed the lathe tool all the way to the center, so you're going to be left with a little nub of material that you'll need to machine off later. A half center simply allows you to go all the way into the center of the part with the tool. It's a pretty straightforward tool, and you'd be surprised how often it comes in handy when I'm facing off stock. And for that reason why, I'm actually quite surprised how little these tools are talked about, because they are just so useful to have, and how simple they are to make. How simple? Well, let's make one. The way that I did it was to simply take the dead center that came with the lathe and just grind it down on the bench grinder. It's as simple as that. Now, I'm not exactly sure what mystery steel they used to make the dead center, but I gave it a dunk in water every 10 seconds or so to cool it down and prevent the steel from softening too much. And the steel is quite hard, so I think it did a good enough job. Now I stopped grinding just before the halfway mark, and I also rounded it off the corners to stop this acting like a D bit. Finally, I can load it in the tail stock, add a little bit of grease or oil as lubricant, and it should be good to go. I should mention though that once I do all the facing cuts, I do eventually swap it out for a life center for all the other work. For pretty much everything else, at least in my book, a life center is the way to go. All in all, it's a really good project and I couldn't recommend doing it enough. Now I know some people will say that you should always have a dead center on hand. I know I got a few comments about that in my original video. And really, if you want to have a dead center on hand, you can simply buy a dead center on eBay for 10 to 15 bucks and grind that up. Now I will quickly mention that they do sell half centers, but they aren't exactly all that common and the ones that I have seen are at least 50 bucks. In my opinion, it isn't worth the price, and I think it's a lot better to simply buy a dead center on eBay and just grind it in yourself. So let's move on to the first proper lathe project, and that would be to make a scriber or a scribing tool. Not exactly a lathe tool per se, but I'm sure we all get tons of use out of these tools. I know I certainly do. Now the cool thing about this type of project is there really is no set of plans that you have to work to, and it's really going to be up to you how you want to make it. For the most part, the design and materials don't exactly matter a huge amount, as long as it's comfortable to use, you like the design, and it works. The only real requirement is that you need to add a tip that's hard enough for scribing. In my case, I simply used a needle. Now a sewing needle leaves a really nice hairline, but in my opinion, I personally prefer to use a carbide tip. I think when I'm scratching through mill scale, a carbide tip simply works better than a carbon steel needle. So if I was going to make this again, I'd go for one of those. Now as you can probably see, the big addition that I made to my design was to add a retractable sleeve that's there to simply protect the tip. I can't tell you how many times I dropped my old one, so this one here is just to protect it. 
And given that it's been three and a half years since I made this one and the tip is still intact, I'd call that a big success. Of course though, it really is up to you whether you want to add one or not. Just make it however you want. As long as you end up with a tool that suits you and you're happy with, you can call that a success as well. Now I think the next tool that you should make is a machinist hammer. I said machinist hammer, not an adjustable hammer. There we go. Now a machinist hammer is used to hit your lathe and hit your parts in the most gentle way possible. And that's why the head on my one has two soft faces. One is made from brass and the other one is made from nylon. And they both screw in and out so I can replace them when they get worn out. Now the brass end is used for steel parts. You know, they can take the battering of brass and not mar. And the nylon is used for everything else. Now if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I use this tool all the time. On the lathe, it mostly gets used for helping set up the compound to set up a taper. And it's also used for tapping apart to make it more concentric with the spindle. And if you've got a mill, you'll get tons of use out of it because you'll use it to tram in vices and hammer in parts to properly seat them in the vise. It's easily one of my most used tools, if not my most used tool. And once again, the design is going to be really up to you. I personally went down with a turned down prism look, but some people prefer to make the head purely out of round stock. And there really is no need to overthink it or really care what other people do. Just go with the design that you like. Same thing goes for the handle. Simply choose a style that suits you and is comfortable. Then all you have to do is thread the handle and then screw it into the head and then just lock tight the part in place. Now obviously on a proper hammer you wouldn't want threads holding these two parts together. But here is a machinist hammer you're not going to be hammering all that hard so threads will work just fine. The only change that I would make if I was to make this again is I'd rather use copper rather than brass. It's just a little bit softer and it works a little bit better. And in fact, when the brass face wears out, I'm probably going to end up replacing it with a piece of copper anyway. So stepping up to a slightly more advanced project now, we have the tap follower, which I made in the previous video. Now if you don't know what they are, a tap follower is simply a tool which goes in the tailstock and has a spring-loaded centre which pushes against a tap which helps it locate and tap very straight holes. These things are so useful, especially on a lathe, because there just isn't a whole lot of room for my tap wrenches. Now if we have a look at the internals of the tap follower, you'll actually find that it's quite a basic tool. You have the body, three springs and the centre with a slot machined in it. Now on one hand, probably the most difficult thing to do is going to be to cut the outside. This one here is a Morse taper design which fits exactly in my tailstock and setting up a Morse taper to cut on the lathe is actually quite a, I'm not sure about difficult, but quite a tedious project and you have to get the taper angle exactly perfect. The way that I normally do it is to sweep an existing tape with an indicator on the lathe until they both match and this can take quite a long time. So if you don't want to do that or you don't feel confident in doing that, simply make the outside of the body cylindrical and you can hold it in a jewel chuck. The only other challenge now is just to make sure that you machine the part very accurately. The central bore should be perfectly centered on the part which means drilling it in the same setup as when you turn down the outside. It's either that or you set it up in a collet chuck or a four jaw chuck and then dial out the run out. The hole also should be pretty accurate too. In my case, I drilled the hole to 25 64 of an inch or 9.92 millimeters. And then I used a 10 millimeter reamer to get it perfectly 10 millimeters. Now if you don't have a reamer, you could bore the hole to size, although that could be a bit difficult, especially if you have a very small mini lathe. Now if you don't want to do either of these things, you can simply just drill a 10mm hole, although it does risk being very slightly oversized. If you do decide to do this, you simply need to turn the centre to very accurately fit the bore. However, in my case, since I did ream it to exactly 10mm, I used some precision ground steel and I had a very good fit with no slop in the bore. 
Now after doing that, you need to machine in a channel, either using the mill or the lathe, and then you can use a grub screw in the main body to help keep everything in place. All in all, I think this is a really good project to start learning about tolerance in machining parts, and pick up some really good skill in making accurate tapers if you choose to use a Morse taper design, and also pick up a bit of skill in using reamers. With all that said though, if it doesn't come out perfect the first time around, don't worry about it too much. The tap follower should still work pretty well. This is all about learning, and if you make a small mistake here or there, you can always learn from those mistakes, and the next time you make a tap follower, you can make it even better. Moving on from the tap follower, the next project should complement the previous one, and that's to make a tailstock die holder. Now I know some people really enjoy single point thread cutting, but me personally, I don't. I only really do it if I need to machine an uncommon or non-standard thread. In my opinion, it's simply quicker and there's less risk of scrapping your part if you simply use a threading die. Now like the tap follower, a thread mounted tailstock die holder is not a hugely complicated part, but you should try your best to make it as accurate as you can. Now it really only consists of two major parts once you take the handle off. The first part we have here is the arbor. On one end we have a taper, and the taper should fit whatever your lathe's tailstock is. The other side is simply a straight shank. I think this one here is 16mm. The other part is also quite simple. It's just a cylinder with a bore which is able to locate very accurately on the arbor. And at one end, we also have a recess which will accept a button die. And I've also added several grub screws which will lock onto the dies. Overall, it's a really simple part, and there really isn't a huge amount that can go wrong, but you just want to make sure that the arbor fits really well onto the main body. So that may mean using a reamer to ream it to size, or use a boring bar to bore it to size. You'll also want to make sure that when you machine the recess, it and the bore are perfectly concentric, and you want a reasonable fit between the recess and the button dies that you're using. Now of course you could add knurling if you really wanted to, or if you have a knurling tool on hand, or just leave it plain, that is simply up to you. Overall, it's a really good tool. I know they do sell them for about 40 or 50 bucks, and the ones that you do buy are actually pretty good quality, but considering that you've just bought a lathe, there's no harm in making it yourself. The final thing I would recommend that you make is a carriage stop. It's simply a block that clamps onto the ways of your lathe and will act as a physical stop. It physically stops the carriage from moving, either travelling too far and scrapping apart, or crashing the lathe, possibly into the chuck. On some really tight tolerance parts, having something like this is actually pretty necessary. It also allows you to secure an indicator and take some pretty accurate readings using the indicator. Now once again in terms of design, it's actually a pretty simple tool. It's simply a plate that gets clamped in place using a set of guide pins to locate it and a cap head screw. The top piece is simply profiled to fit the prismatic ways. The only big downside here is you need a milling machine in order to make it. I know there are really determined people out there who have vertical milling attachments for their lathes, and all the best to them, but me, I personally would not attempt to make this unless I had a proper milling machine. Now you can definitely get by without having one of these with your lathes, but I sure do recommend having one, and they are really useful once you have one. And that's about it for this video. If I miss any worthwhile projects that you think are worthwhile, do let me know in the comments. And I also hope this video was helpful to you if you've just gotten a lathe. Apart from that, hope you enjoy this video. See you next week.